And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Well, it is Groundhog Day, that day of the year where we turn over our fates and fortunes, at least in a weather sense, to a giant prognosticating rodent in Pennsylvania. We look to Punxsutawney, and Punxsutawney Phil the Groundhog to tell us whether we will have another six more weeks of winter or a short winter, depending on whether or not Phil sees his shadow today. Seems kind of silly, doesn't it? Especially when you consider Phil's, Phil's success rate is 39%. That means he's right less than half the time. The mere laws of averages would suggest he'd get it right at least half the time. Seems kind of silly, doesn't it? Kind of foolish. A lot of people believe it, though. And is it any sillier or any more foolish than believing that the government has locked in a secret location in Nevada called Area 51 all kinds of aliens who have visited us from other planets? It is it any sillier or any more foolish than believing that there is a pill you can take before you go to bed that will help you lose weight while you sleep? And is it any sillier or any more foolish than believing that someone wants to give you $10 million because you apparently are a long-lost member of the Nigerian royal family. There's a lot of foolishness in the world. And that's kind of what Paul is talking about in our New Testament reading this morning when he talks about the message of the cross and foolishness. But it's not just foolishness in the sense of all that silly stuff we talk about that somehow found its way into our culture. It's a foolishness that says either there is no God or if there is a God, I'm not going to pay any attention. That's what Paul is getting into. So let's go look at that reading and go in a little more in depth, almost verse by verse, and we can flesh this out a little bit and see what God is reminding us of this morning through the words of Paul. Well, the message of the cross, this is verse 18 here, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You know what's interesting? Is as foolish as we think people are who don't believe in Jesus, they think we're just as foolish because we do believe in Jesus. So what is the difference? There's the same evidence out there. Everybody has access to the same Bible and the same truth. Why is it that we believe and others don't? Paul addressed that as well in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, where he said, The God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers, so they cannot see the light of the gospel. They are foolish because they've been blinded by the God of this age, the prince of this world, Satan. And they have been led to believe and to chase after something completely different. What the world wants. What the world thinks is important. Money and power and fame and success and everything that goes with it. That is the foolishness of those who are perishing, and they can't even see it. They've been, they've been blinded by the God of this age. From verse 19, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the intelligence of the intelligent I will frustrate. I will frustrate the intelligence of the intelligent. All the smart people that think they know more than God. There's no greater evidence of that in the story in Genesis 11 of the Tower of Babel. The people, all the smart people got together and said, you know what, if we build a tower high enough, we can reach up to heaven and make ourselves like God. The old sin of pride. 
God looked down and said, no, you won't. And he frustrated them. He scattered them, changed their speech so they couldn't understand one another. And that was the end of that. We think we're so smart. We think we know so much. But obviously, we truly don't. From verse 20, where is the wise person? That's the point of verse 20. Where is the wise person? Where's the teacher of the law? You can almost hear Paul's sarcasm there. Where are the smart guys? Where are those people who think they know everything? Where are those intellectuals who for hundreds of years thought the earth was flat? Where are those medical men, the geniuses, who for years and years and years thought the best way to treat people was to bleed them with leeches? Where are they? That's what Paul's asking there. And has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? From verse 22, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. Everybody always wants to find an explanation in something besides God. There has to be an explanation. Science will explain it or geology or history or something will explain it. The Jews look for signs. In Matthew 12, some Jews came to Jesus and said, and said, show us a sign. In other words, show us a miracle or show us something to prove that you are who you say you are. And Jesus said, this evil and adulterous generation will not get a sign except for the sign of Jonah. What was the sign of Jonah? Three days in the belly of the fish, right? Jesus, three days in the tomb. In other words, the only sign you're going to get from me is when I rise from the dead. And then you'll know. And the Greeks look for wisdom. In Acts 17, Paul goes to Athens to preach the good news of Jesus. And to them, it was just more intellectual discussion. It says that they love to do nothing more than sit around and discuss the latest hot topic, to just talk, to argue for the sake of arguing. They were in love with discourse and debate. That's not what Jesus is calling us to. There is a truth, the capital T. It is Jesus, and there is no room for debate. Ideas and philosophies may seem interesting, but in the end, there is only one that matters, no matter how much you debate and argue it over it at all. That is Jesus. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but from verse 24, to those whom God has called, to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. God has called, called you. You have been called out of the old life leading to sin and death and into a new life in the Spirit. That is why we are aliens in the world. That is why we're strangers in the world. Because we don't live in it anymore. We're not part of it anymore. We're part of a greater kingdom that God has called us to. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 1.9, You have been saved and called to a holy life. We're called to be different and to live different. From verse 25, For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. That is a metaphor. They're both metaphors. They're simply saying that no matter how weak God is, The weakest that God could possibly be is much stronger than anything man could do. And no matter how dumb God could be, it's still smarter than anything man could do. And it's not to suggest that God is foolish or weak. He is not. But it's just to compare the chasm between God and us. How different we are. And how much farther He is above us. From verse 26, brothers and sisters, think of what you were when you were called. Not many were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. 
Not many were of noble birth, but God chose the foolish things, this is verse 27 now, chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. No better example than that of that than the disciples. Of all the people Jesus could have picked to hang out with and travel with and teach to and then send out into the world as his apostles, he should have picked the smart guys, shouldn't he? The Pharisees, people who were educated in the law, who had spent their entire lives studying the law and religion and knew everything there was to know. Why didn't Jesus pick them? Instead, who did he pick? Fishermen, tax collectors, laborers, common people. A reminder that there is no special knowledge you have to have to follow Jesus. You don't need a bunch of degrees. You don't need a bunch of academic achievements. You don't need a bunch of letters after your name. All you need is faith. And in some cases, having all that fancy education makes it harder to come to Jesus. The Pharisees proved that. They were so wrapped up in their own intelligence and who they were and how much they knew, they couldn't even see or hear what Jesus was saying. You don't need anything but faith in Jesus Christ. From verse 28, God chose the lowly things of the world and the despised things to nullify the things that are. God chose the lowly things. And again, no better example than Jesus. God was always, and Jesus was always, preaching about humility. The Bible is filled with it. That God opposes the proud, but uplifts the humble. And there's no better example of that than Jesus. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, coming into this world how? As a helpless baby in a stable, born to parents who were not wealthy, who were not important. His whole life was based on humility and sacrifice. And that's what we need to remember as well. Who chose the lowly things, the despised things, to nullify the things that are. Remember the prophecy in Micah 5, verse 2. Blessed are you, Bethlehem, though the lowest of the clans of Judah, from you will come the Savior. Humility and not pride. And finally, from verse 30. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. Not anything we did, but it is God who has done it for us. Jesus said in John 15, 16, You did not choose me, I chose you. In other words, in our fleshly state, in our natural state, in our selfish state, we don't want anything to do with God. But Jesus, God through Jesus, has called us out of that into a new life, into a new relationship with Him. Not because of us or our greatness or specialness, simply because of God's love for His creation. The foolishness of the world. I can think of no better way to summarize that than two simple words. The internet. The foolishness of the world, the internet, which had the promise to be the repository of all kinds of learning and wisdom and teaching and knowledge, and what has it turned into? A collection bin. A garbage collection bin for all the foolishness of the world. For the people who are chasing after the things of the world, all those things we talked about, that's where you'll find it. All the foolishness. And what's so incredible is people will believe it because it's on the Internet. If it's on the Internet, it must be true. All that foolishness. 
I've had some very interesting and quite frankly incredible discussions with my son who will tell me in the midst of an argument or debate, well, Dad, you don't understand. I've researched this. I know because I've gone on the Internet and looked it up. The Bible's on the Internet, too. Somehow we never got around to that. He called us one time frantic, almost in tears, convinced he had testicular cancer. He'd gone on the Internet and looked up the symptoms. And sure enough, he had them. Kind of a dull ache in his genitals, back pain, stiffness. I said, son, what do you do for a living? I drive, I deliver food. So you're in a car all day, right? Yeah. Well, back pain, dull ache. It was on the internet. So he had to go to the doctor and get checked out before someone would convince him he did not have cancer. The message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Satan has blinded this world. Blinded them to the truth. That's why people are off on the internet believing everything that's on there. That's why people are out chasing after the vain things of this world that Solomon called vanity of vanities in Ecclesiastes. Money, power, all that. It doesn't last. And that's why it's so important for us to boldly proclaim the truth that God may remove the blindness of the fool. That they may see Him and know Him as we see Him and know Him. Let us continue to preach the Word boldly. To go into our community to serve others. To reach out to the blinded in this world in the hopes that they will see the love of Jesus in us and come to know Him as we do. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Amen.